By nature, we focus on distant things and turn our eyes out into space, searching for something we can't quite describe. The intellect stumbles, imagination is humbled by its task. But in our yearning, we sometimes overlook the exquisite qualities of our own world. No doubt, just as unique as any other sphere were through the stars. There are parts of our world where forgotten things still creep, isolated from the feeble waves of modern change. Where the bones of the earth still shelter its unknown offspring, humanity has made but feeble inroads. This project, collected from local notes and illustrations, will explore the strange and daunting creatures that inhabit the secluded valley of Blackwood, Tennessee. On one occasion, the traditional Blackwood Christmas Festival apparently disturbed an unsuspected animal hibernating in the town hall roof, following and climaxing a period of growing religious excitability. The whimsically named demon bat is an oversized relative to the many bat species native to the region. It is omnivorous, living off of swarms of insects and local fruits. Due to its reported three-meter wingspan, it has adapted to hibernating in tall artificial structures. Understandably, Blackwood's authorities have since established roof inspections for winter events. Blackwood's meager tourism industry is partially centered on the Lost Lake, a commercialized but only partly explored subterranean cave system. Recent expansions into adjacent caverns have complicated the business. This small predator, called the Wampus Cat after local folklore, is evidently descended from native wildcats which strayed into the caves. It is mostly blind, but has developed acute hearing. They have been observed to eat the fish, with which the Lost Lake managers stock the water. But their original or primary food source is unknown, which suggests an unknown subterranean ecosystem. Although small, wampus cats are considered dangerous, and tour guides now follow strict guidelines to avoid them. So far, tourist disappearances are well below the acceptable parameters. Above ground, a gentle and reclusive species strides through the dense forest. The tree walker is a tree grazing mammal which has evolved a unique camouflage. Its long, rugose legs resemble tree trunks and allow it to reach high branches, while its fur pattern alternates seasonally between greenish and brown pigment. Tree walkers are non-aggressive and generally ignore human presence. In past centuries, intensive logging severely reduced their numbers, but as the town has faded, the tree walker population has rebounded. Their contented moans often wake sleepers in the town. While the tree walker has adopted vegetal traits, one plant species has emerged as something of the opposite. Occasional townspeople have reported the absence of birds or squirrels on their property, or even the disappearance of pets. The tendril plant is a rarity, and begins life as one of a large scattering of seeds. It begins its life cycle as a tender, asparagus-like shoot. The few which reach maturity accomplish the remarkable transition to mobility. A mature tendril plant varies in length. Nutrients from the soil are supplemented and eventually supplanted entirely by prey, usually small animals. The plant reproduces via pollination and then casts its seeds in fertile ground. The tender root-bound young are then jealously protected by their parent. Locals have therefore learned to mow their yards very carefully. Another remarkable plant species grows along the various streams that crisscross the valley. The so-called bridge vine is actually a colony organism. Hundreds of vines grow and coil together from either riverbank. Eventually, the two sides meet at the apex, creating a natural bridge. Symbiotically, animals which benefit from these structures have adapted to protect bridge vine saplings. After at least a growing season, the mature bridge vine colony develops special seed dispersal organs, which cast floating seeds into the water below. These flow downriver, and some eventually settle in sufficient density to begin a new colony. The most dramatic plant in Blackwood has an unexpected relationship with an exotic source. Blackwood folklore makes much of a famous meteorite which impacted on private property in the late 1930s. Ever since, the crater site has proven almost freakishly fertile, resulting in unusually rapid and healthy plant growth in the immediate vicinity. The regional Tennessee Bioresearch Authority has investigated but has not published any details on soil composition. In one notorious act, local children who built a clubhouse at the site planted the invasive kudzu vine for decoration. The results were apparently too successful. Contemporary reports only mention spreading wildfires and a temporary evacuation. People in Blackwood don't like to talk about the kudzu incident. 
Many of the more dangerous residents of the valley inhabit the deeper recesses of the forest, emerging into the human domain only out of desperation. The morning screamer has rarely been seen, but its piercing calls have long haunted local imagination. Farmers sometimes attribute livestock disappearances to the screamer, but most consider it expedient to simply replace lost animals. Screamer season is taken for granted. Even further away from settlement, in the wilderness area at the north end of the valley, a few overgrown plaques commemorate the minor Civil War battle of Blackwood Creek, where opposed divisions fought a confused fray in dense woods. While the battlefield is registered and marketed as a tourist site, few people venture there. Local legend diverges from the official history, suggesting the two sides may have been hunting rather than fighting. Early indigenous stories refer to the long arm, a massive hunter restricted to the tree branches, snatching up animals below. While the long arm is presumed to be extinct, evidence suggests it was either a large tree-bound rib or even an isolated carnivorous relative of the sloth. Few researchers have investigated the area in detail. Another subject of local legend is the common yellow garden spider, or writing spider, which according to children's stories can understand human language and can weave whispered words into its web. The phenomenon is documented, although presumably a clever hoax. If this behavior is genuine, it is still unclear if the spiders are simply repeating patterns they see written, or are somehow sufficiently intelligent to comprehend spoken and written language, and then communicate on their own. Similarly sentient behavior has been attributed to other insects, such as the red wasp or Jethro butterfly. One of the most extreme creatures in Blackwood is hardly recognizable as life. The rain-drenched valleys are abundant with bodies of water, which have become the habitats for a unique type of living thing. Through imperfectly understood chemistry, a hydrogen-based, self-replicating system has evolved. In essence, a strain of creatures composed of various liquid solutions survive in certain waterways. These life forms are rarely visibly distinguishable from the water they inhabit, except as occasional rearing or lumbering forms or even relocating rivers. Little is known about their metabolism, reproduction, and specimens are understandably elusive. All that is known is that they are apparently very vulnerable to chemical interruption. They have never been observed in heavily polluted waterways. Oh.